Welcome to Skill Based Art, a learning resource for art students and artist teachers. I'm Gwendolyn Crummins and I'm going to be doing an oil sketch for you today from life. Um, I will be using a wipeout method. So I use a burnt sienna and I will cover the board and wipe it out with my rag. I tell my students that the rag is like an eraser. So take your drawing skills into your actual painting. Um, today I have started my palette. I've set it up with titanium white, um, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna and ivory black. Ivory black is the only colour, um, black colour that I use. I don't use um, any other blacks other than ivory. Um, I use round brushes and flat brushes. Um, filberts I don't particularly worry about. Um, I will show you how I use a paintbrush um, during the process. Um, a lot of people tend to point their brush at the canvas as they go. I will show you how you can use the brush in other ways. As far as my measuring techniques go, I use comparative sizes. I look for large shapes of shadows and lights and I block those in. If I get my darks in the correct spot, I find that the likeness will come after that. So I work very hard at the very beginning of the painting. I know my proportional skills of the average face and I will check my model to see if he fits into that average and how he might differ from that. I know my subject a little well. I've never painted him before, but I know that he's a little bit short between the nose and the eyebrow. So I will adjust my painting accordingly. Because it's a wipeout method, I tend to be able to push the paint around quite a bit and it gives me a lot of openness at the beginning of the painting. I'm using burnt sienna and a little bit of turpentine. I use an odorless turpentine. I don't use an artist's turpentine. Um, I find it too smelly and overpowering. So the odorless is fine. Usually I will have a recycled um, turpentine. Um, it's always about not being fearful of your canvas. So I, I often find that if I just dirty it and I block it in, I don't want it too wet. So it's not dripping, it's actually quite dry. And now I feel like I have to clean this up. I have to put something down there. Because I'm wanting to find lines within this, So scrubbing in and then I take a very soft cloth. I find t-shirt material to be very good. It doesn't leave any fluff. It's absorbent and as you'll see as I go along it um, reacts nicely when I want to um, take off paint. So this is a wipeout method and I'm going to just do comparative sizes. As I said um, in the beginning, I basically am going to map out how the head is going to fit in this canvas. I don't want it to take up the whole canvas. I want it to feel as though there's room for my model to um, sit in there. I've done a measurement. I measure like so towards my model and I will put the top of the brush at the top of the head and I will slide my thumb down to the chin. And I can't do sight size because from where I've been standing it's like this. I would have to stand quite a way back to get it and I can't because I have equipment behind me. So I'm thinking from ear to ear, from the chin comes to the hairline. So I know here also the chin, the top of the head, I have halfway 
is the corner of the eyes. So I'm using a good guess in here somewhere. I'm leaving the lines very, very loosely so as I'm not locking myself into anything in particular. The hairline is, if I measure from the corner of the eye to the hairline, and the hairline is slightly shorter than the, um, from the corner of the eye to the, the top of the head, the, the hairline comes just above halfway. I want to find the centre of the face. Harry is looking nearly three quarters, but not, not quite full, full frontal. So it's somewhere over here, if I'm putting the face fairly central. Um, so I have the eye line in here. Then I'm going to find where this um, mouth is and the nose. So between the corner of the eye and the bottom of the nose, and from the bottom of the nose to the chin, the bottom half of the face is a little longer. So if I find halfway, and I just take this up a little bit, I know I'm going to be within um, cooey of where I need to be. So Harry has got a little bit more foreshortening between the eyebrow and the nose compared to the bottom of the nose to the chin and from the corner of the eye to the top of the head. So I have some measurements down. The lighting is a little bit difficult today, but we are going to work through that and if I measure from the edge of the face I'm leaving the ears out and I take it from the chin it comes to the top of the eyebrow or it comes from the top of the head to below where the eyes are so if I know that I have from the top of the head below where the center of the uh, the corner of the eye is I know that that's about the width of my face without ears. So I have more distance this side of the face and less on here. Now I'm sort of thinking to myself, if I do that, then I'm saying, well, this is my face in here. Am I happy with that position or do I need to regulate this height differently compared to the width again to resize the head but I think I am reasonably happy because by the time I actually get those ears in which will be somewhere around here I think that that will give the portrait enough room to actually sit it within the actual canvas itself. I have a white canvas underneath here so if I wanted to take out the highlights I can. If I'm looking at Harry I'm seeing that the background in some instances is actually darker so next to this sort of side of the face I start blocking in all my negatives and I get the hair happening remember these lines you can push and pull them around And I have basically all the shadows. So now I'm surrounding the whole face area and it's giving me an idea of how my portrait is sitting within that canvas. Deal with all this later. It's like lead pencil. You can put it on and you can take it off. I'm only working, I'm not worried about tonal value yet. Tones can come later. So within this area now, I haven't sort of decided where the, the mouth is. I have to decide that. And I'm thinking by looking, if the chin is around about here, then I have the mouth that between the nose and the lip is a little shorter than the actual length of the chin. So I'm going to have this mouth somewhere in here. When I start doing the eyes, I won't be actually doing the eyes um, themselves. The eyebrows are up here somewhere. And as I say that, I'm just gradually 
putting them into place. I will look for the eye socket itself and under the nose is a little bit of a shadow and down here and also the side of the face. You can see I'm using a really dry paint here, it's just scumbling on there. If I, I never add white ever um, until I'm going into colour. As soon as you add white paint into anything, you're really compromising your darks. And we will use more darks later. So I have this. If I want it a little bit darker at the moment, but I don't want to add any other colour, I can just put a little bit thicker paint With the burnt sienna. I have, I'm not sort of trying to describe an eye completely but just trying to feel my way into finding those proportions. When I'm looking at um, the head, I'm always, if I'm looking at the eye and the eye socket, I'm also checking all of these shapes all around the eye socket. So then I'm looking to see what shape I'm leaving. If I do this dark under the nose, what shape am I leaving between the corner of the eye and where the nose is? I can um, do this by wiping back. So this is the white back. And it comes off nice and easy. I don't have any turps at this stage on my um, rag. And you can just start feeling that the, the head's just coming together a little bit. I've always been told fingers are good, brushes are good. But your fingers can do an awful lot that a brush cannot. The only time I wouldn't use fingers is if it's a cadmium colour. It's not very healthy then. You can also put a barrier cream on your hand if you're a little bit scared of the paint or some people use a glove. You find I work away from the face occasionally because it makes my eye come back to that portrait with a little bit more freshness so I don't get sort of stuck trying to make something work. These areas, if I wipe them back I'm going to be taking it back to white canvas, so I can't do that. That's just not what I need to do. Um, the only real parts that I might like some light is just some little highlights that I might see, and I can pull them back. But I really need to go a bit darker than this rather than um, adding lights. So now it's time to come back to the palette and with the burnt sienna and a little bit of French ultramarine, you can use other colours. Um, sometimes I'll use a, a raw umber, sometimes a burnt umber. I just felt that I'd like to have a lot of warmth in this painting. So I've just mixed those two together, no white at this stage, and bringing back a little bit of dark. When I'm doing the eyebrow, I'm looking at the shape between the eye and the eyebrow. So I'm painting the negative while I'm painting the positive, if that makes sense. 
and just getting just some shapes in and directional lines so looking for angles you can see that bit of blue just gives you um, a bit of coolness as well if I want to remove something a little bit I can take just a little brush and just monitor that So doing a bit of measurement, I'm going to measure from the outer corner of each eye and then I turn it vertically and I say from the corner of the mouth comes to the top of the eyebrow. So somewhere around here where I've guessed, I now have the width of the eyes. So I know I have somewhere here and somewhere here. I don't want too much paint on there because I want to add some colour. I do work with small brushes, I feel very comfortable with them. Most people say don't go into small brushes too soon, but I do like them. I guess it suits what I like to do. So I'm also looking at the corner of the eyes and I'm looking at the edge of the nose and how much distance I need there. So you can see I'm really sort of drawing this. If there was a lot more shadow on the actual face, I would do really, really big areas of shadow, but there's sort of light coming from many directions. I'm also looking at the corner of the eye and dropping a plumb line down. I use a lot of plumb lines. Also having a look at this triangle in here and doing a plumb line from where it is to the eye. So just holding my brush up, comes here, about there. It's a bit lower. I'm just going to take this has had a little bit of time to evaporate now so the turps does dry the paint quite nicely so it's not going to come off quite as much as earlier on So one not to use too many brushes. I'm a bit naughty that way, I must admit. But I clean my brush all the time on a rag. So I'm very conscious of having clean brushes. Once again, I've moved away from the face just to let myself reconsider when I come back to it. To that. I might exaggerate it just for this demo. So wiping that brush 
clean. If I want it um, very clean, I will dip it in turpentine. But I don't need it so much at this stage. So I'm looking from the corner of the eye now to the ear. I'm just going to re-measure. So if I measure from the outer corner to the inner corner, outer corner to the edge of the ear. So I've got a tiny bit of turps on the brush. But I do, when I pick up the turps like this, I do wipe it with my rag so as it's not really wet. Just so as it moves it slightly to give me some boundaries here. I think Carrie's neck needs to be a little bit wider. Also look to see how um, what makes the model feel relaxed into the position that they are. Often it's um, the shoulders in comparison to the um, chin. So just where the collar is going to be hitting, probably don't see it quite yet. Where the collar is in relationship to that chin. And from the width of the mouth to the edge of the face, so always looking at lots of considerations. Don't forget to stop looking at the subject as a whole. lights up here, finding the side of the temple, getting those shadows, some canvases can feel a little bit too slippery they can be harder to deal with. Cotton duck is a good exercise one because it tends to soak up the paint just a little bit quicker. I've got a feeling this is a linen that I'm working on. Keep looking for the big shapes. I'll take a little dry brush or a large dry brush, large for me, just to spread that around. And now I'm starting to think, all right, I've got some tones happening in here, but I also need to lose some edges. So where there's less edge, I will go for it. If you can get this part of your sketch um, really, really accurate, you find the rest of putting paint on for colour is absolutely easy. So still looking for a few shapes, squinting those eyes down. some of your drawing lines you can sort of lose. Now I can see a whole shape in here right? and I'm finding that I need to get some other widths happening here if I've got the eye. In the right spot 
करते हैं So looking for underneath the nose. And looking at this as a whole. So train your eye very much to look not just at the obvious of things that you can name. You can name a nose, you can name an eye, etc. But just looking for other shapes that are within the painting. So the shape in here, the shape through the forehead, there's a shape here on the side of the face. Consideration always from all of these objects that are in the middle of the face to the outer edge of the face as well. put nostrils in later those sort of things once again looking at this shape in here and there I might have exaggerated it doesn't really matter at this stage they just mark in lines the real painting begins when you start getting that color not giving hard edges where they don't need to be There's another shape in under here, which then starts to describe the bottom lip. A bit more width on that chin. Don't know if you can see, I'm wiping my finger with the cloth. People don't like touching the paint, that's okay too. You just need to find another way to do it. I always tell my students to be a bully, push it around, get on with it, don't let it push you around. So I have from the eye, corner of the eye, I have a little bit of flesh and then I have the hairline. Look to see, is it the, the hair going this way? Probably not. Correct it. Keep all of your drawing open and don't think you've got something right. Even during the process of adding paint, you're continuously checking your sketch, making adjustments, push it around. getting a little thick on this paint here which I'm just wary of and we better give Harry another ear I think once again looking at the shape between the top of the eye and the eyebrow then a little flesh. And the ear can come in. It's just a slither. Placement of the ears and things like that are probably important only because that when you give your model a break, it lets you line that model into the right position again. So note them in the first sitting. If I look this here, it comes down through here. Thanks, 
Harry. That's great. I've just aligned Harry up again by looking at his ear on the right hand side. So as I said, that always helps quite a bit. Um, coming back to your fresh canvas is great because you start to sort of see where you can improve your subject. Um, now I started this off with just a few measurements and I do remember them and I'm just going to check if I stayed within those perimeters. See I knew that there was the hair had to go up a bit higher. So it's another reason why you don't um, tend to squash the portrait within the canvas it gives you a little bit of room you know um, a centimeter here or whatever half a centimeter just to angle it and get it into the canvas as you require so I'm just looking at this again give Harry a little bit more of a a softer look than being quite so stern and sometimes making your model just have a little bit of a, um, a joke with them or whatever it just relaxes them slightly and usually it's a turn down mouth that will make it feel like um, it's feeling a little bit more serious and sitting for people it um, tends to get that way because you're just sitting there. I think I'm going to go into colour now. I'm not unhappy with what I've done. Um, I know there's changes. I can, haven't, can't see them all yet, but I will along the way as I reconsider things. So I'm going to just clean off this part of the palette. and I will keep those brushes for later. If I want to clean a brush, I dip it in turps first, wipe it a few times, and it comes up nice and clean. And then I dip it in oil, so as that it has binder on it. Um, if you only leave the turpentine in this next layer, it will give you cracking in your paint. So always add a bit of a binder. I don't add a lot of linseed oil into my paint unless it's dry. It might be a very cold day, so it makes the paint a little stiffer. Um, but I don't use a lot of linseed oil. The paint has got enough binder in it as long as you don't interfere with it with the turpentine. As soon as you add turps into it, you're compromising your paint and it will break down and eventually you'll find cracking in your paint. So if you are using turpentine at all in the second layer, then you need to add your linseed oil. I'll take a little bit bigger brush, something like this. I think it's a number four. It um, looks like a filbert, either that or I've worn it down. I think I've actually cut this one because it went a little bit fluffy on me. I want to mix up a shadow color so I have a palette that is um, toned and it's my mid-tone. So I can work things out on my palette as I go. It's a, it's a good way to compare tonal values. And especially if you're outdoors painting, it's very hard with lots of lights and glare. So if you see your palette as your mid-tone and anything that is lighter than the palette your light tone and anything that's darker on your palette as your dark tone. It lets you do a lot of comparisons. As an artist, we're comparing all the time. We're comparing height against width for our measurements and we're also comparing light against dark and warm against cool. So we're going to go through all of that now. I make the flesh tone using three primaries. So if I'm wanting to have a dark um, flesh, I will use my dark yellow. And I'll make up a fair puddle of this because it will go through the rest of my paint. I'll use a little bit of alizarin crimson as well to warm it up. And then 
I gray it off, I neutralize that color. I could either use a blue or I could use the black. There's no strict rules on anything. If you've got a burnt umber out, you might get away with doing that. But I like to use the three primaries. So I have this color and I have the original mix of the red and yellow beside it. You can see I extend my color. So if I am looking at Harry, I'm glancing up at him, I'm thinking this looks a little orange. So I'm going to warm it up with a little bit more red, only half the mixture. So now I can compare one, two, three. I see a little bit more ochre. So I also add that. I can see a violet as well. So I'm adding more red, more blue. There's yellow on the brush, but I'm going to add a little bit more. And I have a darker color, less white. This one's quite warm. I can darken it and cool it with a blue. I keep glancing at my model and I might take this color again, the red, the yellow and a touch of blue. So no white in those mixtures. A little bit more yellow. Now I don't usually mix all of these up. I mix them as I go, but this is my theory. So if I'm wanting to have a look at something and say, how dark is something compared to something else? I put a little bit of the paint that I have next door and I can see a comparison. So therefore I don't have to blend paint. I can put patches of paint on. These ones that I've mixed up will probably need adjustment. But that's okay too. Everything needs to be revalued as you go and work. So coming back to the portrait, I'm going to take a little bit of the cool colour. I think I have more of that on the brush. And I'm going to work my darks first. Never work your lights first. That is something you should never ever do. If you work your lights first you will find that your dark light and all of your darks and you won't be able to get them dark enough. So squinting down looking for edges that you can lose because drawing gives you a lot of edges and really we don't want those edges in the actual painting. I'm still painting fairly thin. I will get more buttery later on. But if I get buttery too soon, it's just going to slide everywhere on me. So I'm also looking from the top of this part of the nostril where those lines come from. I've got a light shadow there and I am picking things like this up. come down to my little brush. Now if I use a black, I never use black pure. I always add either a red, a blue or a green into it. This time I want to keep it nice and warm and I've added alizarin crimson. So by mixing up dark colours I am actually using my darker version of the primaries.
still do a plumb line down looking at the negative between the eyes and also that eyebrow and the shape that is happening in here. Harry's got blue eyes, we'll worry about that later. You're still working out your sketch at this stage. come back to something like this. Got a little bit more warmth in it and a little bit more yellow. I think my brush is too small. talking about how I want the face warm but at the same time it's really important to play those opposites so if you're thinking oh warm 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 make sure you find your cool colors too if you're thinking dark 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 I have my arrays and my trusty rag I can take to the painting at any time but I promise I won't rub it all off. Not yet anyway. So I'm just using this as like a, a bit of a dry brush just to soften. I'm blending a little bit, but I won't eventually. It's just so as I get the feeling that I'm wanting down. Very little white paint at this stage. Just using the white of the canvas, so either painting thick or thin, just like you would with a pencil. You may use pressure or you may have less pressure. a little bit of extra. Have I used white yet? I don't think I have. If I want to grey that off, I'll go and grab a little bit of blue or black. If it goes a bit pasty when you add the white, sometimes colours go a little pasty when you um, add white. So add a little bit more tint back into it. Sometimes your lighter colours will give you enough light without actually adding too much white because they have white already added into some of them. Keep looking at that hole all the time. Pretend your um, model had sunglasses on. Panda eyes. just getting some shadowed areas down so that I'm left with the lights that I need. I will work some cools and things into it. I'm also drawing as I do this. So just adding a little bit of white to catch.
some mid-tones. You can see this colour here is not far from the tonal value of my palette. So I know I'm in mid-range there. I always feel like my paintings um, look dreadful when they first start off. But if I'm really loyal to my eyes and what I'm seeing, and I believe what I see, rather than thinking I know it to be different, if you believe what your eyes see, you will always come to the right conclusion. It's when you say, ah, but I've painted something similar before and it happened this way or that way. Um, and so you tend to do the same again. It will not be like your subject. So always be loyal to what you see. I'm just dragging the brush on the side so as that I don't leave a, a brush stroke there. I don't want them yet, but I will. And when I start painting buttery, that's when I will. So working around the whole painting pasty so I'm going to retint it with a bit of the lighter red and yellow and I need a little bit bigger difference so my original is here I can see I've made a change with the palette now I don't have a pasty color I'm painting around that eye socket so as I'm creating the correct shapes around the face. So I'm doing comparisons of tone saying, ah, is this one similar to that one? I will get it down. When you're doing lines like this, keep them warm. They tend to put a little bit of blood in the flesh. The old masters used to um, glaze a beautiful crimson line around figures. And it made them look fleshy, all those lovely nudes. So just little shapes all the time, everywhere. I'm looking at the after after shave. Um, area under the nose. So I've mixed this up, I found it too light. So next door to it, I will mix a colour and say, all right, I have this difference now. How can I compare it? Does it feel correct? there and looking for patterns again I'm 
I said I would show you how I use a brush. I always remember my art teacher saying to me, treat it like a baton. It doesn't have to just point. It can be side. I tend to sort of really play with my brush quite a lot. I really like that feel um, of doing it. And it makes for interesting marks as well. The other thing to look for in your painting as you're going along is um, the biggest differences. So if you've been working somewhere and you say, oh, this area down here is getting a little left behind. This is starting to grow as a painting, but this part isn't. So come back down to it. Make sure that you let it grow at the same rate. Keep moving about. It keeps your eye fresh at the same time. I really want to make um, uh, Harry's eyes glow. He's got very nice eyes, so I need for that to happen. Now, one thing I need to do at this stage, and I've already considered it, but I need to do it, is to establish the colour of the background because that colour has to harmonise throughout the whole painting. I've already started, Harry's got a bit of a grey background, blue-grey, and the burnt sienna with the ultramarine blue will probably work very nicely in behind here. I have already preempted that and started putting it through the actual face. So I need a nice big puddle of it. It's not a really dark. It's got a, more of a mid-tone. It's even got a little bit of a greenish, greenish type look about it. So if I add the yellow into that blue, it just gives you a little bit a green tinge and green tinges in the shadows of the face are rather lovely it's a little bit bright so I'm not keen on that I want to neutralize this so I always work that I'm going to um, mix opposites on the color wheel to get my neutrals so I have a blue green so to speak here so if I say that I use a red orange into it, then I'm going to get this to grey down. I don't want it to go really dark, so I'm going to use my lighter colours. So if I take a reddish orange, that's got the other colour on it, it doesn't matter. And I add that into there, and I'll mix half of it. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but here to here, we have a little slight difference. Maybe you can see it from here to here on the actual painting itself. It's just a little bit more neutralized. So mixing primary colors together and keeping it that you just use your opposites on the color wheel. Now people will rush out and buy a color wheel. You probably don't need to. And it's a really easy way to remember um, how you can do it. If you know your three primaries and what they mix, what you can do is just say to yourself, all right, I have a blue. What are my two missing primaries? Yellow and red. They mix orange. So orange is opposite to my blue. It's always the missing primary is your opposites on the color wheel. And it's the easiest way to remember. Looking at angles. I want the paint to spread because I'm sort of a little impatient with it. So I'm just going to add a little bit of linseed oil just to spread that. There we are. I want to get onto the face. 
And as I'm blocking in this background, it's making obvious now that some of the um, hair tones up here have to be contrasted. So I'm doing a comparison once again of edges. So let's come back to a dark. Harry's hair is fairly dark, but as I said before, I don't use um, black by itself. I'm going to put a blue this time into it. And I'm just going to soften that edge down. I don't want it to be a hard edge. Just seeing patches. Sometimes you just have to be brave and slap it on. I keep reminding myself to be brave. It's nice to work with darks underneath as well. So I'm looking at this area here as I'm painting this and I'm considering the shape that I see in there. If I want to make an adjustment to that, I take my trusty rag and it also helps get some softer shapes in there as well. Now I have the shirt because I want this to be um, the focus of everything. Nothing around it should distract and all of these marks are distracting me at the moment as I paint. So I need to start considering a little bit of the shirt. Not that I want to paint the shirt particularly if um, any consequence but it still needs to give me the feeling that Harry's on the stage, not the shirt. A good thing I feel that when I paint is that I always think of um, the theatre and the main character has got lights showing on them and they are in, in that light and everything around them is a little bit more subdued. So I'm looking at, as I'm talking, from the corner of the ear, which I think I've got in line correct, then I'm looking at where the collar comes in relationship to the corner of the mouth. Now I paint also against the form, so I go around, but I also paint against it to create that soft edge. So painting against the form is very important. But at getting back to this theatre, I find that if you paint as though you're creating um, a production, it's really saying that if the flute is playing, the highlight should be on the flute. So if you're going to have a um, character in your painting think about where your light's going to be and don't let other things distract from it. Now if I look at that shoulder as I'm talking I think this is too high so I'm going to take that down because I want Harry to look relaxed and I consider is the shoulder lighter than the background? Mm, it's very very close. I could lose it and just find little parts of it that could be interesting but I will do that a little bit later. At the moment I just want to get something down here that I've got Harry in the limelight. So 
I'm looking from the edge of the chin down so considering those negatives I want this to spread so I'll just add a little bit of refined linseed oil and painting across the form those edges can just mingle there they don't we'll discover them a bit later so have a plan when you're painting don't just come across something and say oh I have to deal with that now you should actually be thinking about what you're going to do I've used my blue brush I'm dipping it into the flesh color I know that it's going to gray it I knew I didn't have too much paint on but for those that are not so experienced perhaps um, take a clean brush and mix it up but I don't want the ear to compete with the face. So I'm getting rid of things that are going to do any competition, taking them all out of my competition. You can see I haven't filled in where I'm sort of seeing highlights. Um, I leave the canvas to do that for a while. Even though I'm messing up all my puddles, I'm still extending things. So there's a theory sort of behind it, as I was explaining before. I have my original pile. I know there's too much white in here. I've dragged this um, ochre colour in. And I'm doing comparisons of other things that I know I've already put on to Harry's face. I need a little bit more dark, so I just extend it into the dark slightly more. Now if I have a look at this ear that I'm painting, I can see this edge of the face has to go darker. So if I take a little bit of that dark in and I compare it back to what I've just put on, I will get it, I hope. And there we have it. Right now I see a nice warm colour happening in here. Um, it's a crimson rather than the red. And I'm just looking for shapes. I hold the brush so lightly, don't come down here and start holding it like a pencil. Hold it back. I often hold my brush just like this so as I can, I drop it often just because I'm holding it so lightly. Because different pressure will give you different strokes, it's like a pencil. So just placing little shapes that I see. All the scrubbing that we had before starts to be get, getting broken down into smaller areas. Terrible that I have blue on the same brush, but um, I don't advise it for everybody, but it seems to work for me. I think it's because I load my brush um, fairly thickly. And when I do, sometimes I'm not always doing that. I will actually scoop this way. I haven't got much paint there at the moment. But by scooping, I can actually see on the edge of the brush how much paint I have and how loaded it is. So is that when I do that, it comes off and the blue doesn't. If I want to clean my brush, which I should do, 
I wipe, I dip into the turps, wipe again and then coat it with my linseed oil to put binder back in. I need more of these colours so I'm just going to mix those up. And because it's such an easy um, mixture of three primaries, it's not hard to repeat colour that you have. It's just pushing a little bit more warmth into it or a bit more coolness into it, a little bit more yellow into it. And you can see I've left a little bit just on the edge there. And here we go, we're nearly there. So I don't cover everything. I will always leave a little bit on, of a puddle so as I can see where I'm at. So I'm looking at the front of the forehead where that shadow comes down, where the directional line is too, that's really important. I'm having to go across like this so as I don't get a glare. If I do a downstroke, I'm tending to get a little bit of a glare with the lights behind me. So I'm sort of dragging the paint in directions that it won't affect what I can see. go across that again. This is one that's a little bit cooler so I just take a little bit of that coolness and take it into the edge, not the whole puddle, just a slight change. There's no real highlight just there so I'll get rid of that shape. This needs to go quite darker. I want a little bit of drama in the painting too, even though the face is fairly light. I'm looking, comparing to these, I want it a little bit greyer. You can consider your burnt sienna as one of your reds, that's okay. It's an earthy type red, or if I was doing more of a, an orangey palette, I could consider it as one of my dark oranges. It's just how you want to lean it into your thoughts, if that makes sense. Always make sure there's enough yellow in your paint um, for flesh. A little bit of black, just to neutralize as I'm coming down to the the beardy area. So also checking from the corner of the mouth. And you can see I've sort of neglected Harry's mouth and things like that. A little bit cooler, I think. A little bit darker. So you can see my extensions of where I'm hitting. like harmonizing color throughout so I tend to use from one area to the other. This side is a little bit dark, this is lighter so I'm just using the shadow color that I've got under the chin for some of the hair and I'm looking to see what this area is doing in shape. There's a, a shadow in there of flesh. 
and it's angled here. And the two tones that meet there are reasonably similar. So I'm doing comparisons in the background. We'll define those later. I like some of the underpainting coming through, but not too, too much. time to get into the nitty-gritty of the face so this is what I want to actually bring out now when we've we've mostly been using our darker colors our um, dark ochre our yellow ochre and um, alizarin and ultramarine so now what I'm going to do is um, start working with my lighter colors I'm just going to make some more room here because I've done so much explaining I'm taking up the whole palette. And because I want light colours, I don't want anything to interfere with it. So my darks cannot be on my brush. I have cleaned it. And I pick up from the outer edge where it's not being interfered with. And I start making a variety of light colours. They're not all orange, so I am going to sneak in a little bit of glycerin, but with the lighter orange. And I want a darker version of those. but less brilliant. So my ultramarine, it's my missing primary, so it's going to give me my neutral color. Adding white, if it goes too pasty, then I'll retint. So I'm just extending these. So as you can see where I'm pulling them from, it's a little bit too pink. So I will come back um, maybe with a little bit of ochre. Yep. And see if I can get a lighter version of that. It's more of a cool colour. Cooler than something else. A little bit more yellow. Always make sure you've got enough yellow in your paint. The highlights and flesh. We're getting close to that but you can see this one is slightly greyer than that one so because I had the blue in this side. Just refining things. I want to change colour because I'm working in my lights I'm pulling that paint off my brush and picking up. I just want to test how light that is. It's fairly light. So by finding my lightest light, and in here is sort of one of my darkest darks and the nostrils, I am able to compare other tones around it. So I will come back 
and you can see how I scoop the paint onto the brush and you can see that little pile of paint on there so I know where it's going to be if I only just stroke it up like this it's um, it's sitting differently it would sit differently on the actual thing it goes up the paintbrush and nearly hits the ferrule which is not what you want to do so you want to just scoop that paint so as you've got nice buttery paint on there and I'm just going to refine some of this drawing again so I never think that I've got my drawing correct if I take that paint off there I'm just going to cut that edge I'm going to find a warm between the light and the and the turn of that nose. So this is going to come back. This is in shadow in here. Let's get that little pocket under the nose in. It's um, sort of got a little bit of a, a greeny tinge to it, but I don't want bright green. So if I've got yellow and blue in my mixture, I come back with my missing primary colour. And it's still basically got a green tinge to it. I want it more opaque, so a little bit of white. And there's a little bit of a coolness in there too, so I'm just going to pinch a bit of that blue into that green. Once again, I can see the differences that I'm making, and I've assured myself that that's going to work as I put it down. The shadows in the around the edge of the nose. Just sort of filling in areas now that I haven't got any paint on. It's probably too warm this colour for a shadow, the, the highlight, so I'm going to make a cooler colour for that highlight. I'm just pulling my paint, I'm taking it off, so I'm actually just dragging it. I don't want it on thick. I'm leaving a little bit of the um, canvas to some of the light for me. The old masters, um, they let a lot of the um, white underpainting do some of the work for them and it acts like a bit of a torch. So I'm taking that green and just put it into other fleshy tones just so as I'm cooling a few things down as it turns. Paint across. cool in here. And she's got that little bit of a green colour through it as well. I'm 
Now I'm looking at the difference between these two tones. There's not a great deal. One slightly warmer, one slightly lighter. And then I have a little bit of a dent or a curve above the eyebrow. And the eyebrow itself. So putting the paint on a little bit thinner there. And looking at edges, edges are everything. The eye is not white. You can see how flexible this eye can be. It doesn't have to stay exactly where I had it. And there's a little bit of a, an angle I'm looking at, I always say to students to look at broken match six. So as you can see, a line and how it might be slightly curved. trying to describe something that's circular underneath the flesh. So you have to be aware of how it lays under that flesh. Like a golf ball. Keep your eyes squinted so you don't create too many lines and if you see a harsh one just soften it off slightly try to be a little bit economical with your brush strokes so make each one count that eye just for a little bit and come back over to this one. And finding that pocket just in here. So a little bit lighter. there and then it comes down here looking once again for the panda eyes if you think of little rituals of how you remember things it just makes you remember them all make that nose come forward I'm just looking where that light is what's something that's darker than that a little bit more orangey
a bit lighter. Comes down to that nostril, so looking for angles. The whites are never white, of course, you all know that. Let's come down to that lip, come back to the eyes. Sometimes it's about where you can lose a line and understanding the form as well. Painting that underpainting out slightly. Coming back to darks. And shadow under the nose, a little bit of a cooler colour. This can go on to get quite refined. jump back up to the eyes darken in here don't need to tell so much make decisions There's a cool colour that's coming down there. This is probably darker than what I need, but I just want to get that line in because it's a sort of an important one. This is too light. We have to shape that. Line in here. And there's a front on that cheek. That comes down here. I'll come back to my darks. Thanks, Harry.
Right, um, the ear is getting left behind, so I am going to start with that. Getting darks in first. This board is reasonably slippery. Now I have a, a tonal change here which is a little bit too strong. So I'm just cutting in between that. So I'm gradually I'm losing that underpainting. Sometimes I like to keep a little bit of the underpainting, but sometimes you like to lose edges and things like that. I balance my finger on the edge of the palette, uh, the canvas, if I'm trying to be steady. While I've considered the nostrils, I really need to consider this part, so how that front of the nose cuts in front of that nostril. I like this colour, it's working a lot through the painting, so I'm going to mix up a bit more. So mixing the three primaries. with that. Right, let's come back to the nose. Looking for flat areas, looking for rounded edges.
I'm really just running my eye around and refining this before I can start really placing some nice fat paint um, onto the painting. And I see a difference here, but it's so close. This one's a little bit cooler. And that gives you the side of the face. But it's not cold. It's about the same tone. little pathways of time in there and refining things now I feel like this needs to be a little narrower I need for get to remeasure I'm okay little subtleties now and graduations and I can catch the edge of the white paint and just drag a little bit here and there that blue. These are sometimes your brush strokes. They're too obvious you just need to pull them across each other just to soften edges slightly. Especially working wet into it, it does get um, slippery. So I always tell my students, be nosy and look at the neighbours. So what I mean by that is to check one tone against another. So if I was coming back to this tomorrow, I would start reassessing everything that I had done. And I would be looking to see whether I have overstated the tone or understated it.
So this neighbour that I'm putting down, how much difference is there to the one beside it? And how can you best describe something with a brush stroke? Once again, I'm doing this in a quite a warm colour. Have a look at this side of the face, whoops, compared to also the shape you're leaving in here. So if you see a mark that you've put down, just cut across it with another colour or tone just to refine it. at this as a whole and also from the corner of the eye down and direction broken matchsticks it's not one continuous line it's very slippery presume you know what a mouth to look like. Let's keep on looking for shapes. And how the form goes around the face. So there's a different patch here and this is overstated so I'm looking at distances from the mouth and how the chin is thrusting forward and how wide it is I'm looking for a colour now and a tone that's going to give me the side of that chin area. So I have the mouth, it's not, the tonal values of my neighbours are not very strong, but there's slight little turns there and it's that subtlety that you just want to get. that break up that's what I'm looking at 
So the shadow from here, it's a little bit cooler. way too wet there so good that I make mistakes I'm going to take it off with my eraser my trusty rag I don't call them mistakes actually I always say they're adjustments but it just got too slippery for me so something had to be done broken matchsticks that give him that feeling that he's a little bit more relaxed and not so fed up sitting for me. I'm going to come down to a pointy brush, a little tiny one. This is like a zero, just to get in there. So, as I said, it's the sagging corners of the mouth can make it feel like you know someone's very stern so let's see if I can just lift it a little bit broken lines just like in drawing Above there, a little bit lighter tone, and just getting in those lips. Oh. A little bit darker, cooler. see a little bit of that greeny colour. Yeah, and also I can see it's probably more on the cool side of the face, which I think is this sort of side. Not that there's a great change. So I have the nostril here. And I need that depth. The cheek coming around. So making sure I have the balance of warm and cool within the face. These two tones, they are a little bit too contrasted. So let's deal with that. Also, 
looking for those sockets and how you emphasize them. There's not a lot of contrast on the face, so it makes it just slightly difficult. shape of the white in the eye, not too light. This is a little severe. bit of paint off my brush so it's not so full. A little bit of green. Just to surround that tone. In here there's also a little bit of that green. You can see I left the mouth for a little while and I come back to it, fresh her eyes and you make better decisions that way. So I'm finding a few little cools. Now I can see it on the nose, that green as well. A little bit darker in there. It's refining all of those neighbouring tones. green and then more flesh colour through this passage
I'm mixing up a little bit more of my background colour. have nice line around an edge sometimes it's nice to leave it so if I take this one here this light I don't want it to be competing with the um, flesh up here little angles as well. This um, shadow under here just needs a little bit of softness. you really nearly feel like you're um, spreading icing on a cake. <laughs> you never achieve lights until you get your darks in. softening them up and capturing those little shapes that make the character See the length of the line so doing comparisons keep your drawing happening the hair is getting neglected the ears getting neglected lots of things to be happening around the place how bright do I need that shirt I want it to come from the background but maybe just a few lines will give me enough information without letting it detract from the portrait itself. I'll keep it a little bit rough. I 
I've done something a little bit naughty and um, I'm going to do that trick. I didn't put my dark down first so I'll never get it in over the top of the light. And there's um, a little bit of dark just in behind that ear, which lets me then describe the ear. So I'm going to come over to a bit more pink into the green. I don't want it um, competing with anything else. This edge has got to be softer, more mingled. Just finding the side of the face. And just how to make areas turn. So I'm just uh, looking at a couple of shadows down here, just something sketchy, don't want to make it look too finished for this portrait. ultramarine blue and ivory black, tiny bit of burnt sienna in it, don't want to make the edge of the hairline um, too sharp, so really just working that front layer. slightly go back to the background I 
I want it to spread so I'm just putting a bit of oil into that. Just graying it down with a little bit of black. Oop, way too sh I have a bit of colour here I should have been looking at. I'm doing my comparisons. I want to cut around the face but I don't want to create a hard edge so I'm not really taking it up right next door to um, a solid edge. There's some broken colour happening because I haven't over mixed the paint. Broken colour meaning that it few different colours can come off your brush. nice to leave um, watercolour is still a lot with their paper where they let little tiny pieces of the paper shine through a large wash and sometimes an oil painting can look really well handled doing that as well. clean brushes and I want to get um, some more light on this face. Now I've added too much blue into that and it's gone all dirty. So it happens to me too occasionally. looking something for something with a um, a grayness to it I'm just looking for some little reflective lights that I see This eyebrow shape's not quite right, so I'll come back and reassess that. This needs to go up a little. Okay. 
okay and then I have a little bump near the eyebrow a little bit of warmth in there so still looking at my socket I feel like it's not squared off enough here I'm seeing things I didn't see before You can just look at your painting sometimes way too long and if you get away from it for just a tiny bit it just helps just for some cools and soft edge okay this and create that width there and taking this line just a little bit wider the center of the highlight I'm just working the edges of it people are moving objects and uh, that they even though the model is sitting still the tiniest little um, flinch a highlight on the nose can change or something can change and sometimes you get a glimpse of something that is really really um, nice to look at and you think oh I have to include that and you wait for it to happen again portraiture is not always about being kind to a person but that's how I usually try to paint is um, finding something that's that I like in the person and hopefully bringing that out but you can paint portraits for many reasons so just taking some of those cool colors back in there Just be true to what you actually see.
passage of a, um, the bone that comes along here. Cheekbone. It's about a bit like painting fabric. Sometimes you need to know what shape is happening underneath. That gives you a better understanding of what you are trying to achieve. in a few of these areas. I'm flipping the brush over. I'm not touching my edges quite so much. to go back over it two ways I wouldn't normally um, but it's a little bit glary away a bit lighter so I can compare the two little bit of red into the black refining a few little shapes highlights I come into this green here
little bit of a darker colour. I'm trying to get that roundness there. giving a little bit of a suggestion of hair but want to make it blocked as well and don't want to tell too much while I'm over here I'll deal with this ear suggestion of what's there. And probably just need to cover a little bit of the underpainting a wee bit more. Carrying that green through. So I'm just dragging the brush, brush back and forward using the side. And just making sure all of those edges are nice and soft, nice transition. Just broken edge. Now this ear just needs a little bit more dark. A little bit cool, darker. Still not dark enough. Painting shapes. If I press heavy on the <clears throat> 
on the paint at this stage it's so wet that it's moving but you can use that to your advantage as well like down here I actually when I pulled that down some of the dark moved away onto the brush probably and just let some of the light come through from the canvas so it actually establishes something you can see I'll just do that can you see how it goes back to the canvas and lets light come through I don't necessarily want it in that exact spot but just to let you see what I'm up to if you find that it's moving around too much you either don't have enough paint on your brush or you maybe need to use different pressure for um, various areas along the form you can see I've created a hard edge which I do not want I'm just breaking that line be very aware that you need to have broken lines in your painting So if I'm looking for big shapes, you'll see that I'm painting blocks. And if I'm doing that, then I'm on the right track, it will come together. just discovering just a, a few little edges that I think will give us enough the viewer enough information I'm going to keep this a little bit um, rough I don't mind leaving a little bit of the underpainting happening down here because it gives you that transition of where the painting is sort of finished and where it's um, more worked. So I'm not trying to cover it all. all day after lunch I come back and I will often think oh how could I got it so wrong 
and sometimes it's just the model has um, sort of melted into the pose I guess that they're a lot more relaxed and then you think it's more that you um, haven't exactly got it wrong it's that that model has just settled more into it and even the glow on the face the flesh after a lunch also um, just has a little bit more of a shine to it tension in here. Don't want to make it look too green. And you don't want to describe everyone's uh, little bits and pieces. It's uh, Sort of being kind. I remember I did a portrait of my mum when I was little, maybe 14 or something, and I gave it to her for Mother's Day and she put it quickly behind the wardrobe door. <laughs> I had put all her wrinkles in, I thought she looked great. where your eye goes to places one moment you're painting somewhere and then the next minute you find you're in another territory altogether but that's the way it should be bring the painting up as a bit of a hole want them you don't want it to uh, stand out too much this detail but you still want just an indication that it's there drawing the eyes um, the white surrounding the iris is um, ever so slightly lighter around the coloured part of the eye than what it is everywhere else plus you have to realise that the eyelid is acting like a veranda so it's casting a little bit of a shadow as well here I'm not going to really define where um, 
the art begins or ends, it sort of can get lost into that shadowy effect. So I'm sort of mushing it all together a little bit. Just getting a few little shadows. Making sure that the direction of the line is reading correct as well. There's also a little bit of highlight just on the top of this cheek underneath the eye socket. It's a cool light. And there's a turning one here. And I think that's about as far as I will take this portrait sketch. Thank you.